And we will be looking at how to liberate your voice. I'm super excited about that. But first, um, Claudia, I'm super excited to have you. Welcome. Thank you so much, Cindy. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you so much. Yeah. Now, I know everybody was super excited that you dig it in the sun, your amazing UV awareness raised um, product was with me at the Oscars party, Roger Neal's Oscar party, Whoa. one of Hollywood's biggest parties in Hollywood. And people have been kind of like itching going, okay, I want to see these interviews. So the first people person that we've got is Terry Moore. Now, Terry Moore has literally, she's 91 years old. She started acting professionally in the 1940s. So she's done like hundreds. I know, right? I mean, it's amazing. And she's Oscar nominated for Come Back, Little Sheba. But what I love about an icon like that is that you're going to let me just actually play the interview because I think that you're going to be really surprised to hear what her answers are about beauty and all those good things. Awesome. icon in the industry. Oh, thank you. You know, I don't think that people realize as performers, as actors, how unbelievably tough this business is. And to have the longevity that you've had is remarkable. Like, what would you say would be your number one thing that has kept you going and acting and getting so many roles that you have? Um, love, prayer, good health, and uh, a lot of friends. A lot of friends. That's beautiful. Well, congratulations on your Icon Award. It's very, very much well deserved. Are you working currently on any projects? Well, I yes, uh, a movie called El e Evie Rose. I play Evie Rose, and another movie I've just finished called A Silent Life, and and the the life of Rudolph Valentino, and I play the lead in that too. Wow, I love that you're just, just kicking butt still. That's amazing. Oh yeah. So we have a question for you. What would you tell our audience would be the number one thing they need to do to help save our planet right now? To help our planet. Oh. To help the poor, the, to give to people who need giving, who need help. Yeah, we need to open our hearts. And lastly, you look so gorgeous. How are, what is your beauty secret? Like, what's your number one beauty routine that makes you look so gorgeous? Well, I've never drunk or smoked, and uh, I eat right. And how do you protect that gorgeous skin of yours from the <laughs> harmful UV rays? That does it right there, and I exercise every day. Yeah, it makes a difference. Oh, yes. Terry, thank you, and congratulations again. Thank you so much. So lovely. You're gorgeous. <laughs> Okay, okay, isn't she, she a treasure, treasure closet? Oh, adorable. She's wonderful. Oh my yeah, heavens. She's like 91, 91 years old. old. I, that is outstanding. Outstanding. She's 91 years young. She's lovely. Absolutely lovely. I know. And, and I look at her skin, skin and it truly is, is like, she sounds like she's a person that exercises and that's conscious and takes care of herself. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I do think there's a difference when you stay off drugs and alcohol. That sounds really obvious. Yeah. Yeah, it does. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we just got to live up to hers. Do exactly what she's doing. It's awesome. I know. Can you imagine being in your career for 91 years or be 91 years old and be in your career for 60, 70 years? Boy, my math is terrible. And seeing what she has seen and the people that she's met and surrounding herself with amazing people like she talked about, to, what a wonderful life. Amazing. I know. She's pretty inspirational. So we asked her her beauty secret. It's staying off drugs and alcohol, which I know that you do as well and that you're a big fitness buff. But what are some of your beauty secrets? Because you are, you know, just gorgeous and vibrant and kicking butt in the world. Oh, I thank you, Cindy. Um, well, obviously, I'm living a very healthy, clean lifestyle. And I've actually stayed. Uh, I love the sun. I'm a sun worshiper, but I've actually sunblocked my whole entire life since, since I was a little a little uh, child. And my mom, back in the day, put some luck on us. And I fought it to the nth degree. But <laughs> thank goodness she did, because decades later, I can say that my skin is actually still quite vibrant and, and it's not showing sun damage. So that has been a big, huge part of, of skin regime for me. 
Yeah. And I, I agree with you. Like, I feel like my, you know, I've always been really good about sunblock and we love the sun and we're going to talk about how a little bit later, we're going to really talk about how to make sure you're always protected from the sun. But mm -hmm. I think about my friends who were constantly tanning, my friends who were constantly in tanning salons as well as out in the sun. And I feel like by the time they were 30, they looked like they were 50. And I am not about shaming people for age because I'm like the older we get, the hotter and sexier and more sassy and brilliant we are but it's more about preserving it's it's preserving your best you right right and making sure that you have um the best types of routines that will that will you know survive the ages um and uh, having a really really great foundation of habits yeah i know for me people always ask about my beauty like how do i stay so young and looking and like all of you no drugs no alcohol lots of exercise um lots of sunscreen and being really conscious about that but one of the things that i do on a daily basis is that i meditate and i do yoga and i love my yoga so i disconnected the phone and yet it's still ringing ha huh, it's all part of being part of the live show but I love being like, I love doing yoga every day in those deep stretches because it's keeping my body lubricated. And when you're lubricated, it just keeps your cells younger and fresh and healthy. It's cool. Yes. Awesome. I yeah. think the and the meditation, the quietness, the, the stillness also reflects in a person's lifestyle and habit, yeah. um, allows you to go to sleep at night. Sleep is a really big part of beauty regime and just being, <laughs> a, just, just being a healthy lifestyle. So yeah. anything you can do, like I do a lot of exercise. I do the meditation as well. And just allowing me to sleep at night is primary because then you, you wake up the next morning and hit the ground running and two feet on the ground. It's awesome. Uh, is it awesome? Oh. <laughs> well, next we have, I want to show another, another guest off the Oscar party stage. Her name is Rochelle Royale and she's an up and coming music star. She's been working with, um, she's been working with, what's that guy? Shania Twain's producer. And why I can't remember his name right now is beyond me. Matt Lang, I believe. Um, but yeah, she's absolutely gorgeous and lovely, but I think that she needs the dig it in the sun. And I'm going to, uh, let me just play this for you. Um, and, and we'll go from there. It's so fun. Your beauty. Like hey everybody, here we have a fellow singer, Rochelle. It's so great to meet you. You too. Thank so, you. What kind of style do you sing? You guys can look up my music. It's Rochelle Royale, wherever you listen to music. Um, and tonight I'm rooting for Cynthia Erivo. Not only is she a Broadway star and a musician, but she's being honored as Best Actress, which is amazing. So. Well, it was a it was a really truly heart wrenching. Dean, I can't even imagine what the what it must have been like to have to prepare for such a great. Yeah, I think any serious role takes a toll on these actors, and we commend them for their work. Absolutely. Yeah. So you look absolutely gorgeous. Tell me, what is one of your beauty routines that helps you to keep beautiful and healthy? Sleep and water, and try not to let human beings stress you out because <laughs> it'll age you really fast. Exactly. And so, when you think about the, you know, the beautiful California sun, how do you protect your skin? from you being damaged. I stay away from the sun. She just stays away from the sun. Yeah. And lastly, Cindy Uncorked is all about getting uncorked about social issues. So what is, tell her all in one thing that you would do to help save our planet. Um, I recycle already. Um, and recycle. Uh, tell other people to recycle. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. All right, and we are back, Claudia. Oh, so beautiful. <laughs> isn't she gorgeous? Yeah, yeah absolutely. And you know, it was interesting, interesting because I was reading her backstory and why she sings and her mom had committed suicide and her only way of coping, right? It's like with mental illness, it's just, it happens to just about every family. And, she, you know, she really got into her music and her music has been her way of letting her voice be heard, has liberating her voice and getting uncorked and, and being seen. And it's, but she's a beautiful spirit. Yes, she is. And it's a testament to who she is that things like that can happen to a person, to a family, and right. you still survive it and thrive as well. So just, she's a beautiful sir. 
Very yeah. Cool. yeah. And she's covered a lot of what we do. I mean, it's basic. People keep trying to reinvent the wheel with beauty, you know, sleep, water, exercise, take care of your body. But when she said she just doesn't go in the sun, we have a solution for people who don't want to risk going in the sun. That's because right. There's a lot of people who say, well, I could go in the sun, but what happens if I don't put the sunscreen on, right? What happens if I don't know when to change it or I forget to, and then I get burned? So there, there is, there's people who just avoid the sun like Rochelle right away. But can you tell us a little bit about this, 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 little, this little thing? I would love to tell you about Dig It in the Sun. So Dig It in the Sun was created by our company. And as you can see, there are little circles there. Those are actual dots or biopolymer dots that act like your skin. You put it on your skin. You put your sunblock over your skin and the dot. And when you're covered by your sunblock and protected from those awful, harmful UV rays, the dot will turn clear to know that you are protected by your sunblock. As your sunblock leaves your body from sweat, activities, swimming, etc the dot will start to turn purple again and that tells you that you have to reapply your sunblock to protect yourself from the uv rays so it is the freedom to go enjoy yourself in the sunshine without worry that your body is going to be attacked by those horrible uv rays right and so if you just look at the picture from your lovely brochure that i've got it starts out purple it starts out purple like which That's tells right. you that you're not protected. That's right. And then once it turns clear, you know you're fully protected. Right. And when it starts to turn that in between purple, then you know it's time to get out of the water and get that or get off the sand or whatever you're doing and get dig it in the sun back on you. Now, here's what's really interesting as one of your brand ambassadors, I'm very proud to be. I love this product so much. So I was recently, as you know, in California interviewing celebrities and I want to test it out. So the next day I went into the hot tub with my publicist, Kelly Bennett, who's fantastic. And here's what I discovered. We had brought several different sunscreens mm -hmm. and I peeled this off. I stuck it on. I took the sunscreen. I lathered it up and it was having a hard time getting clear. Mm -hmm. And it got only semi clear. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, that's really interesting. And then I went to my friend, Laura Rubenstein's house and a great marketer. She's fantastic. Great friend of mine. And we tried three or four of her different products. And again, none of them went fully clear. And so I called Allison, who's your creative director. And I said, how come they're not going fully clear? And she said, because not only does Dig It in the Sun tell you when your sunscreen is wearing off and when to reapply, mm -hmm. but Dig It in the Sun tells you how effective your actual sunscreen is. So here's That's what's right. interesting. I think I went through 10 different brands and do you know what the best brand is? Tell me, I don't know. know. Afino, not nice. Afino. Now I remember that your team also telling me, I'm trying to get this in the right lighting, Avino. Um, your team also told me that Vichy is really great. So when I put the Aveeno on the Digging in the Sun, it went crystal clear. Awesome. So this really is interesting because we, we go to some of the times the lower end products to protect us, but the Dig It in the Sun little UV awareness dot, this amazing little thing will tell you how effective your sunscreen is. Absolutely well. It's yeah. crazy. It's like, it's amazing. So I now know that Avino or Vichy's are the ones that I'm using moving forward. But I love this product because people like me and people like you and anybody watching that's super conscious is never going to ever again um, be able to, you know, never again are they going to ever guess right. if they, or if their sunscreen is gone. Right. And um, and the wonderful thing about the dot is that you were able to use it with mineral sunscreen, chemical sunscreen. Um, and a lot of people are really conscious again of the environment of coral. Right. Uh, so mineral sunscreen doesn't affect the coral. So people ask me, well, does the dot affect the coral? Well, the dot is not chemical. So the dot right. only tells you the effectiveness of your sunscreen. Your sunscreen that you decide to put on as your choice could be a mineral or a chemical um, I personally love using mineral just because I do a lot of scuba diving I'm around coral. I love it. It's my, it's my oh. passion. So it's, uh, it's, it's 
protecting the environment at the same time as protecting me at the same time. I love it. <laughs> it's so cool. So I'm going to show one more thing. And then we have still the Pointer Sisters coming out. Oh, We're going to talk about how to liberate your voice. Um, we've got so much coming up. And we have an Emmy winner coming up next, actually. Wow. So this is the little amazing travel pouch. So here's what I love about these products. This fits right in my purse and it doesn't take up any room yep. and this is waterproof. So I'm super excited because my UV awareness dots are in here and these are going to be in all the duty-free stores as of fall 2020. That's right. We're going to be in some airlines. We're going to be in duty-free stores around the world. So we're so excited. So excited. Uh, so look for digging this one. Yes. Can oh you my God. <laughs> I love it. I'm so freaking excited. I love this product so much. People can get it right now though. Dig it in the sun.com, right? They absolutely can. Dig it in the sun.com, made by my company, digitapparel.com. So both places you can go, dig it in the sun.com. And awesome. you can get it now for your winter travels and get ready for the summer. I love it. Yeah. So next coming up, let's see. I want to hear more of these celebrities and their beauty secrets and what they're doing for their gorgeous skin. We have an Emmy winner. Her name is Kira Reed Lorsch. She, what I love about her is she's like you and me. She's a real activist in the world doing great philanthropy work. She's a president of a mental health awareness organization. She, she supports, supports her local shelter. She's a, a Emmy award winning producer, actor. Um, so let's see what she has to say about saving the planet, getting uncorked and talking talking about her beauty regiments. Sounds I'm super great. excited. Thank you. Yes, I picked this up the last minute. It was such a gray, rainy day. I'm like, well, I need some color. So I'm like, I went like <laughs> turquoise and pink lipstick and happy. I know, you're like, bam, yes, yeah. yeah, a little ray of sunshine. Oh my God. So first of all, um, congratulations on all your Emmys. Oh yeah, that's fun. Yeah, because you're just a rock star <laughs> woman kicking ass in Hollywood. Well, you know what's fun about winning awards and like tonight it's Oscar night. We're recognizing people for great work and it also, it opens the doors to keep working. Once you're an Emmy award winner or an Oscar winner or a nominee even, it's like you're in the club. So it's nice to be in the club and I get to work with my friends and make movies I want to make and act and projects and it just I'm just so happy and to be a part of Hollywood and, and I love being here at the Hollywood Museum to celebrate tonight. I love that Danelle Dadigan is getting the award tonight that I, I got last year, the Icon Award yeah. for Women in Philanthropy. And I get to help present because I just, I love this place so much and I she, she does such great things for the community here in Hollywood. Yeah. I can so feel your heart, Kira. I love it, I love it. So what are you currently working on? Because you've done a lot of philanthropy, you're a Emmy winner, you're producing, you're doing all kinds of amazing things. I have, uh, let's just go down the list. I just finished, Let's do the list, stay back. I just finished a, a new drama a series called Rumors, which is about young Hollywood. Um, look for it on Quibi. <laughs> um, we have The Interview, which is a short film that we're pitching, and it's in, in contention for some short film awards. I'm, do, 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 do. I, my friend Nancy O'Brien is um, wrote and is producing a film that I'm going to be in, a horror film called Third Floor. I just finished. It's coming out, I believe, in April, Witches of Amityville Academy, or Adam, Amityville Witches, or I don't know what they're going to call it, but we shot in London. It's a beautiful. I'm one of three Good Witch sisters. We had the best time. And um, oh, Beckman, the action movie with the Baldwins, Billy Baldwin, I work with a lot. Um, David A.R. White, Jeff Fahey. Yeah. It's going to be a really good. And I get to be a soccer mom by day. Oh my God. Pit woman, human trafficking. Oh, horrible person oh by God. night. So it's such but a those are the roles, roles, right? Yeah. Those so are the good. roles that we get to like get yes. into our dark side. Yeah, and it's a great redemption action movie too. Yeah. It's with Pure Flix. It like it like has a good lesson in it. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I'm just having the time of my life. Oh my God. Okay. Yeah. So we are all about getting social issues out to the world. So yeah. tell our viewers one thing that they should be doing to save the planet. Well, you can stop drinking plastic bottled water and then just buy another bottle and throwing that one in the trash and like just be very conscious of your consumption, you know, and it's like and, and they're, we're even doing it on the red carpet. It's like, let's pull dresses out of our closet. Let's trade dresses. Let's like reuse things that we already have. We don't need more, 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 more. Right, exactly. Like I borrowed my dress from Garo Sparrow, yes. great project runway designer and- Lovely, right? and yeah. And give it back to him, I don't yeah. know, right. Are you, Stello uses sustainable fabrics. They're a right. local LA designer. Anything that you can do your little part 
start there. I love that. So my last question is, you're so gorgeous. What's your number one beauty secret? I'm not giving you my beauty secret. <laughs> Okay, so for I would viewers. say good, clean living and lots of water, but we know what that means. Yeah. Good doctors. Um, you are so funny. <laughs> and how do you protect your skin from those damaging UV rays? <laughs> well, I'm going to Maui in the morning with lots of sunscreen and a big hat. I love it. Yes. Yeah, the light. Thank you for getting on court on Cindy on court. Nice to meet you. Have nice fun. to meet you. Happy Oscars. Happy Oscars. She's truly hilarious. She's awesome. I love that she wears sunscreen. Excellent. That's great. You don't wear sunscreen. You saw the crowd behind me because I was so excited to tell her about digging in the sun. So Kira, if you're watching this, I'm going to reach out to you personally because uh, I wanted to tell her about digging in the sun because it's just, she's like the poster child of someone who wears sunscreen and goes out there, but she's hysterical and so accomplished. Yeah. Awesome. And she's beautiful as well. Awesome. She's beautiful inside and out. Yeah. So, Claudia, I want to talk to you because, you know, we've gotten little hints of your accomplishments, but um, one of the things, so, I mean, you come from the corporate world, you were on the top of your field there, kicking butt, and you it wasn't your thing. I love your story of how Dig It Apparel happened and the connection to Kevin O'Leary. Can you tell us a little bit about that? And then after that, by the way, we still have the Pointer Sisters coming up who are the most fantastic human beings. Awesome. I'm looking forward to that. Um, well, thank you for the opportunity of explaining a little bit about myself. Um, I was in the corporate world and I chose to leave the corporate world behind because I had three little children at home and I wanted to live in strength, balance and harmony. Those three words that I live by every day and make my choices by strength, balance and harmony. And I had an opportunity um, over some beers on a Labor Day weekend to create an idea. And the idea was a very foo-foo, shishi idea of creating a manicure protective gardening glove for ladies that didn't exist in the world. Like one type of product that were, you know, girls are talking and we ruined our manicure in the garden the day before and they should create a manicure protective gardening glove. Well, they became us. So it's taking this an idea and how many people in the world have an idea going, I should do that. And then nothing ever happens. Right. But our company, we actually did do something with the idea. So we had the aha moment and then we researched the idea and then we launched this little tiny product and that product went on a organization called Dragon's Den, which is the Canadian equivalent of Shark Tank, partnered with Kevin O'Leary at the time in 2010 to 2015, launched other products as well. Kevin is no longer part of our company, but that is wonderful. It's very amicable and we have bounced off into other products and Dig It In The Sun is our latest product. So we're a lifestyle brand of products for women that take care of themselves and their families. I love it. And, you know, one of the things is that what I love about you is that you always have such a positive mindset, a positive spirit, and you're like, I'm just going to get strategic, focused and do it. And I still remember that amazing story about how you know, you went on Dragon's Den, the equivalent of Shark Tank, but you really just didn't tell anybody for months that you were developing this. Because when we do that, sometimes it gives away energy, right? It's that balance of like getting your close people cheering you on, but not giving away all the energy. Either. Yeah, yeah. Only a very, very select handful of people knew that I had left my corporate world. To all intents and purposes, I was a stay-at-home mom. But at drop-off at the kids, I went home and did worked on the company. I worked on the company prior to the kids waking up. I worked on the company after the kids were into in bed. And it was a quiet endeavor until I felt I was ready to announce to the world that I had stepped into the success of the company. And that was the actual airing of Dragon's Den. So when I said to people that, would you like to come over and, and watch, have a party? And they said, well, sure. You know, my friends love a party. And they, I said, well, we're going to watch Dragon's Den. It was a Wednesday night. And they said, well, why are we watching Dragon's Den? And they said, well, because I said, because I'm actually on Dragon's Den. And they went, what are you smoking that you think you're on Dragon's Den, Claudia? <laughs> and, uh, so I announced to the world then, only then, 18 months after the, the company really, really had legs, that we um, started this company and that we are taking it global. So it was, it was stage by stage. I also don't like talking to people and allowing any negativity into oh, my life. Right. So it stops that negativity. And I only surround myself with positive people. And those positive people uplift me and help me forward and carry me forward on the hard days. And I carry them forward on the hard days. So we're, yeah. we're a very positive environment. 
And then you also, I mean, you have multiple companies and we could be here for two hours, but you also have BG Wealth Group partnered with the amazing Craig Dunkerley. So you are amazing at helping people to reduce their taxes, save money and invest in ways that are not your typical ways that take you 25 years to be wealthy. <laughs> That's right. That's right. So we've, I, I hopefully people can emulate what I've done in terms of my own wealth and success. And we've created BG Wealth, uh, BG Wealth Group, which is incorporated with BG Marketing Authority, which is a marketing company that helps other organizations, entrepreneurs and business owners kick it to the next level in marketing. And they're a big chunk of how I market my own business. Yeah. We have BG Property Holdings, which is an investment organization that allows people to come into uh, real estate investment holdings and equity holdings without biting a bigger chunk than they're allowed to because or they can because we can do it for them and walk them through it and that's a lot of the way that i've made my money to be able to then put back into my own businesses as well yeah. um, and then we have bg uh, accounting and business solutions which is as you said an area that people can save money on taxes and think out of the box i love yeah. it I mean, I've seen Craig and you speak on this and what you talk about in terms of investing is stuff I've never heard before. Yes, yes. It's amazing because I've been around the block a lot, especially because I, you know, my specialty and my other company is 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 training the top influencers and and thought leaders in the world. And I'm like, oh, this is new. That's really cool. <laughs> well, it's, it's out of the box and it's. <laughs> And it's all something that people can do easily. They just have to let us know how we can help them. Easily. I love it. That's so good. Um, okay, so I know we got to go to the Pointer Sisters in a minute, but tell me about the charity because you do a lot of philanthropic work and you work with Sonus. That's I your do. Big love. Yeah. So yeah. How you're giving back to the planet. Well, in around 2017, 2018, you know, you're successful in your career, you're successful with the family, etc. Everything's going really well. There's still something missing in my world and I didn't realize it until I went to a conference about social entrepreneurship. Social entrepreneurship allows people like myself to help others learn a craft and become entrepreneurs in a underprivileged country or an underprivileged environment. So by chance, I, I, and I think it's the universe opening, that I was involved with an organization called sones.org, S-O-N-A-S.org, and it's based out of Cambodia. And we have been able to teach these women how to um, organically farm, uh, organically take that cotton and dye it organically, then weave it into um, its own scarf and uh, wrap. And I actually have one beautiful scarf right here. So it's organic cotton, oh, no. organic dyed. And I've assisted with this organization to bring the products around the world and get the word out about Sonus.org. And in addition to that, everything that I sell, 100% of the net proceeds goes back into the BG Scholarship Fund. And I fund one deserving youth from that village in Cambodia to go to university. And the very first recipients was in 2019 and she's going to civil engineering. Her name is Malika and I'm so, so excited. And Malika, after five years after graduating, she has to sponsor somebody. So over 10 years, we will have 12 people. Over 20 years, we'll have 32. And over 30 years, we'll have 72. But the ripple effect around the world with these individuals also giving back will be bigger and bigger and bigger like the oh. commercial. Yeah, it's awesome. So that is awesome, Claudia. Amazing. I love the inspiration. Thank you. Thank you for, for doing that because it, we really sometimes feel hopeless in the world. And it's like, it just takes us giving to one person, which then creates a ripple to three, to 10, to as you, you know, yeah. it's amazing. Yeah, yeah. And I went over to Cambodia last year and went to the village and it was just, it was a life-changing experience. So if anybody, again, wants to know anything about sonus.org, just let me know. I will be going back in September and October this year. And if you want, you can come with me. I'm putting it out there. Just come with me. Oh my God. Now I'm tempted to go because I've always <laughs> wanted to go to Africa. Okay. So Pointer Sisters are up next. Are we ready for them? They're I love the Pointer Systems. I'm so excited. Very excited. Awesome. Here we go. Come on in. Hi, how are you? I'm so great. How are you? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm great. It's so great to meet you. We're so excited. I'll let you. I'll stick to my Broadway opera. You stick to your life. Keep the beat. 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 All right. So, what are you two amazing women up to these days? Oh, well, we just finished a book. We just finished a new song. 
We did a song, a tribute to our sister June, and it's called Feels Like June. Feels like June in September. Any October, time of the November, year. December feels like June. Yeah. You can listen to it on YouTube. It's a fabulous song. And we also just finished a book about the Pointer Sisters family. Yeah. And it's called Fairy Tale. Fairy Tale, because this our life has been a fairy tale. <laughs> but you know what? But you took big risks. I mean, you went against your parents, didn't you? Yeah, I read your story years ago about how you totally went against your parents and you ended up stranded or something and then you had to call for help. We was yeah. stranded in Texas. Exactly. Right. Texas. Oh, that was like, I mean, you took the rest, you did the work. Right? That was hard. I mean, and we were like, you never heard us sing, but let me tell you something, believe in us. We can <laughs> sing, and if you get us out of Texas, we'll show you something. And that's what we did. That was our first producer, David Rubinson. He believed in us. He got us our first record deal. Well, our second record deal. We had him with Atlanta before that. But he's just, but he was a wonderful guy. And he's still a dear friend of ours. He's living in the south of France now, but we communicate by email and we love David because he was our savior. Still do. That's amazing. Okay, one last question. You look so freaking gorgeous. What do you do to keep your skin so gorgeous? Oh, God. Talk to you. Drink a lot of water. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for being on Cindy Encore. Thank you. All right, Thank keep you. singing. Oh, Jenny. Keep, oh, keep the beat. Keep the beat. That's amazing. The energy. Oh, it's awesome. You, you know, know, when, when I interviewed, interviewed them two years, years ago, I um, we actually sang, I'm so excited. Oh, oh wait, I didn't pay rights for this to be able to do this, this on television. television. So, um, yeah, I'm really hardcore about that because you have to be careful. And, and I didn't pay the rights to sing that on television. So, um, but yeah, I did an interview with them two years ago on the red carpet and we were singing. I, I'm so excited. And it was so much fun to sing with the actual Pointer Sisters. There's a song that's going to happen. There's, oh, what a, what a special treat to meet them. Amazing. Yeah. And twice. It's like, I get to, <laughs> you know what I love about their story is the ability to take risks. And I mean, they took a big risk. They defied their family, you know, and they were willing to do a big ask. Amazing. Three things that all of us can learn. Take the big risks. Be willing to um, do the big ask. What was the third thing? <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember. And also surrounding yourself with people that can uplift you. And obviously they have done that through their entire life. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So I'm going to take a moment, Claudia, to talk a little bit about liberating your voice. And then we're going to talk about how to liberate your voice together. Wonderful. So, all right. So everybody, I'm super excited because my new book, Liberate, my new book, Liberate Your Voice is out in the world. Um, it, it's all about how to trust your power in a world that shuts you down. And I don't know, honestly, anybody who has not struggled with letting their voice be heard, speaking out, speaking up. Um, and so this book is like kind of my baby. And I'm so excited to put it out in the world. It really gives you a lot of practical pieces to be able to step in. Um, and what I'm really excited about is that the book is just finished. It's being shipped. It's on its way. And crazy me bought these little pink packages because right now you can get the book at cindyashton.com forward slash liberate your voice. And I'm literally handwriting and signing and sending off the books personally. Um, they will be on Amazon in a month or two. But in the meantime, I just want to get right to my fans and be able to give them something personally from my heart and be able to sign it for them. Congratulations, Cindy. That's wonderful. Thank you. I'm so excited. Like I just, I really feel like I, this is something for me, Claudia, that I have struggled with my whole life. And people say, but you're always out there singing and speaking and, but being able to trust my own truth that I've made so many choices, not mistakes, because that makes me feel like I've done something wrong, but I've made choices in my past where I didn't trust my own power and they ended up with huge disasters, whether it's hurt my health or my finances or my confidence in myself. And, um, and especially living with chronic illness, which is for an entire other episode, learning to be seen, a lot my voice be heard and advocate when people see me on screen and camera and see and go, you look fine. <laughs> Well, I think it's, I, I love that. And I think a lot of times we can't actually know. We don't know what we don't know until we get the experience. And then right. we have to trust our gut. And often, as you said, we don't trust our gut enough until we have had those experiences that we have had to reassess our choices. And we will never make those choices again. So. <laughs> Well, I'm grateful for the lesson and we're moving on. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so what I wanted to talk about, because every week on Cindy on Cork, we're going to have a liberate your voice. And today I really want to talk about 
liberating your voice, and I want to talk in terms of business, of getting your voice out there as a business owner, as an influence, getting your product and service, but more than that, your message heard and seen. And one of the things, Claudia, that's been really disheartening is that since I've announced Cindy Uncorked coming back out, um, I have given people the opportunity to apply to be in a, as a guest. And now I'm up to 40 applications and not one of them was pitched correctly. Ah, interesting. Right. And I almost want to respond. And I'm like, okay, I'd stop my job to teach people. This is what people teach me how to do. Yeah. Um, but what do you think is the top reason that people are not pitching correctly? Because yeah. whether we like it or not, you're pitching all the time, trying to get your team on board with what you have to say, trying to let people hear your message and be driven to buy your book, your service, your products, you know, like trying to pitch the media. We're always pitching whether we like it or not. What do you think is the number one reason why people's pitches are not heard? That is a very easy answer for me. I think a lot of people talk about themselves far too much yep. and they need to listen Listen to the other person, the audience, the person that's talking to them, hear them first. So it's about them and it's what it's in it for them, not what's in it for you, what's in it for them and how you can then fit into their world and provide services or a product or a ways that you can help them be better at their world and make it very dead simple for them to work with you. That, yeah. that is primary a lot of people go nah, 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 talk 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 so people glaze over it's like well, yeah. Yeah, i don't want to hear about this well, well and i also feel that people say too much of the same generic thing so i literally on the forum made sure that it said what specific what specific topic how is it going to change the audience right and every single person has pitched me things about their life story and i don't know how it changed the topic, but also in my case, it was really obvious that no one has actually watched a TV show. Where research, 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 research the people. Research, 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 right. Yeah. And so I, I actually have an odd. So, Claudia, you know that my specialty is working with people like you who are multiple six, seven figures, already established, and then helping to catapult to the next level. But I was recently asked to teach this course called Pitch Perfect, which is not about pitching, but about connecting and understanding how to connect with influencers like the media, like potential clients, and be able to close them. Mm -hmm. And so, this is one of these one time things because you know that my fees usually start at $10,000 or more. Mm -hmm. uh, but I've decided to do a really small group program that's really about like how do you develop a pitch for and how do you develop a pitch whether it's for speaking engagement versus media versus being able to network versus being able to talk to a shareholder like all the different ways that you need to be able to communicate so that you make it about them and you make a connection that makes them go oh my gosh I'm so inspired to go out there so um and, and I'm really easy to do that and it's, it's easy yeah. yes but people don't realize how easy it is because they're all about them and not realizing about the connection. And in the course, I'm really talking about lead generation and I'm talking about influencer marketing, how to connect with people like you and I and actually connect with us so that we don't feel like we're being sold to. Right, right. Because I have really people important. pitching me all the time and I'm like, why are you trying to leverage my following? Who are you? Mm -hmm. And, you know, whereas I have other people who are starting out, but I, that I'm happy to promote because of how they've approached me. Right. So, yeah. So if you're interested, go to cindyashton.com, pitch perfect. It is starting next week. You actually get my personal time in a small group. Um, and as Claudia knows, it's a rare opportunity because of the clientele I usually work with. But I'm kind of sick of these people trying to pitch me and I'm like, I can't use you you look like you're fabulous but you didn't give me a topic that makes sense right anyways right so now that i'm off my soapbox we are near <laughs> the end of our last episode of our first episode of season three i wanted to let everybody know next week we are continuing the whole skin thing <laughs> um the whole beauty skin thing so we have irena sheva come on coming on like you, Claudia, she is all about giving back. She is like a woman that's an immigrant in the U.S. Within three years, built a million dollar beauty industry, like um, beauty um, company. And she has a foundation called Save the Brow because often we have cancer, not us, but a lot of people have had cancer and we lose all of our hair and we talk about you know, getting wigs, but nobody talks about the brows, the eyelashes. And so she and her foundation literally goes ahead and gives people free permanent makeup for their eyes and their eyelashes oh, wow. before they go through chemo. It's beautiful. So next week, we're going to be talking about more around skin wellness, more about um, beauty tips, and just making sure that you always shine as your radiant self. And of course, I've got way more Oscar party interviews coming up next week, too. Awesome, Cindy. That sounds just great. Just wonderful.
And Claudia, thank you so much to everybody watching. And Claudia, thank you for being my special guest in the oh, first. My pleasure to kick off your season three. Congratulations, Cindy. Yay! <laughs>